everybody. This is Karen Lambert with Howard Hanna. I hope you're doing all right today. Um, most of us are sequestered to our homes pretty much for the uh, what shutter at and home, the pause in New York State. Um, I just wanted to reach out to you to explain to you a little bit about what is going on in the environment today in real estate. And uh, with the executive order from Cuomo, what that means for me as a realtor and for you as a potential client and or client. Um, so uh, what it means for you, you're a buyer. There are no more physical viewings of a home. You will no longer be able to go into a home, look at the floors, look at the cabinets, you know, look, look high and low. You, you, you're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to focus in on special areas in the house that you want to focus on. It's kind of going to be up to the person who is selling their home. They have to create a video for you if it wasn't done before a week ago, because a week ago, the governor put an executive order where uh, all non-essential businesses need to cease uh, working outside of their home. So for me as a realtor, I can work at home. You know, I can enter listings into the system. I can talk to you. Um, I can virtually help you look at homes as far as sending a link to you, but I cannot take you to the home. I can't see the home in person either, just like you can't see the home. So I can't tell you if I see things that are going to be issues. Uh, like if, if the wiring is messed up, you know, if you need new electricity, um, you know, are there damages to the home that you're not seeing? Is there mold? Um, you know, or is there a mold-like substance? It's mold. So is it a mold-like substance? Um, you know, is there a smell that's off that maybe you're not smelling? Or is there a feeling in the home? Some homes you walk in and you have a horrible feeling and you're just like, ah, let me out. So for, for those things, you're not going to be able to do that. What you're going to be able to do is watch a video that most likely the seller has made. So is the seller going to show you something potentially bad? Maybe, if they're honest, if they're ethical, you know, and, and I believe most people are. However, you know, there are times when certain things may have been overlooked and or omitted, um, you know, from sellers and, you know, the buyer ends up, if the realtor doesn't catch it, the buyer ends up having a problem. So in that aspect, I do not personally think that buying a house right now without being able to actually be in it and feel it and really see if those pictures and video match that home or have they somehow doctored it because, you know, you can, you can doctor things. Um, so those are things to, to think about. Um, then again, for a buyer, uh, initially, we weren't allowed to have home inspections, but now they have made it where some of the home inspectors are essential, or maybe all of them now, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, but so now you can get a home inspection, but here, here's the thing. Um, so you can't get in the house, but we can have an inspector go in, but you can't go in with the inspector and I can't go with the inspector. The inspector has to be alone in the house. I have full faith and confidence in my inspector, but he's not going to be able, he or she is not going to be able to see everything wrong with the house. They, they just can't. They do their best job. They give you the best estimates on when they think things are going to fail. Usually, you know, with my inspector that I love to use, he'll go around in the house and tell you everything you need to know about this house. You know, where's the main water turn off? What do you need to do if something electric, you know, electrical goes wrong? Or, or if you have a, you know, any, anything that you have, like anything with your, your heating system, your air conditioning, they can teach you different things that you need to do or what, what you need to do around the house to help you maintain this house. They can point things out to you, which, which they will do in their report. Um, and you'll see pictures, but it's just not the same if you're not physically there. Um, I do believe they could probably try to walk you through showing you pictures, um, but, uh, you know, are they going to do that? I don't know. That would be, you know, an extra step that maybe they're not willing to do. I don't know. So then we got to think about, okay, when is the inspection going to happen? Well, there's another thing, you know, you can put it into your contract that you will actually be able to see the home 
physically yourself before you close. Um, but then, you know, I, I know some realtors have made contracts where they're saying, um, you know, we'll close this deal within 60 days of the executive order being released. Well, okay. What if this lasts for three months? Three months down the line. Now you're going to close in another two months. So that's five months down the road. Uh, people's circumstances very, you know, may very well change before we get there, unfortunately. So if you're buying now, I would almost recommend that you close as soon as you can because we don't know that your job is still going to be there five months down the line. And if you are, are um, uh, what's the word? If you are furloughed, thank you, or laid off, you have no more income. Even though you might still be an employee of that company, you have no income coming in. Therefore, you will not qualify for your loan anymore. Um, you know, just because they say at one time, yes, you can close or even clear to close until you actually close. And even when you're closing, they call and make sure you still have a job. You're still getting income. Um, you know, they make sure that nothing has changed so that you can actually close on your house. But so not only are you putting a gamble on where you're going to be five months down the road to six months. I mean, who, who knows how long this is going to take? Uh, at the bare minimum, saying 60 days out, let's say already we're put out to the end of April of keeping social distance from each other. So that would be May, at the beginning of May. Um, it would be the beginning of August when you would close, right? I think I have that right. Yeah, because it would be the end of the month of May. Anyway, um, August or September, or excuse me, July. But that's still many months down the line. And if, if we are not back to running normal in a, a month, two months, um, the longer this goes out, the more people are going to be losing their jobs through a furlough, a layoff, or just, just them letting you go. So there's a gamble. On your end, will you be able to close at that time? And, and, and on the seller's end, they're gambling with you that you're still going to have that job. You know, um, you're still gonna have that job, you're still gonna have that income, and nothing in your life is going to change. Well, I mean, I know there are a lot, and I'm not saying this is going to happen to you, but I do know that there are a lot of people who have been furloughed and have lost their jobs already, or their hours were cut so extremely low that they're not making the same money. And those people are no longer going to qualify for the mortgage. And that's a problem on both ends. It's equally a problem, and it's a, it's a problem for the mortgage lender too. Um, so it just, it's really just a problem. Um, so if you can close within the 60 day to uh, three months at the most from today, okay, great. We have a better chance of you getting and keeping your job, hopefully. You know, but again, things may change come the beginning of May or come the beginning of June, uh, you know, or or even July, we don't know what's going to happen and we don't know how long this is going to last. And, you know, as a buyer, you know, to buy a house without actually being able to get in it, because if you close before the executive order is over, you still cannot see that house. You cannot do a final walkthrough. Um, you know, so, you're, you're buying a house without actually ever being in it, which people do. I mean, people have done this. And if you're comfortable with doing that, then okay, that's fine. But if you're not comfortable with doing that, you should not do it unless if you have to. I mean, if, if there's some extenuating circumstance to where you have to do it now or, you know, in a month or two, then do it, do it, try it. But you know, I can't guarantee that things are going to be the same for you and that you're going to be able to qualify to do this. Okay. 
So let's say as a buyer, you do put in an offer. You do say that you'll close after 60 days of after the executive order has been released. So here you've been waiting, who knows, let's say three months. You've been waiting three months. We're now at uh, July, beginning of July. And you get to see that house. You're like so excited. Oh my God, my house, my house, I got my house. I'm, I'm gonna go see it. I finally get to see it because the executive order has gone and I can legally go see that house. You hate it. You absolutely hate it. Uh, another thing that could happen, and see if I got a little nosage, is something could happen on the seller's end to where that house isn't even gonna be there. Let's say the seller had a flood and they don't repair it completely. And, or, you know, do you still wanna buy a house that's been flooded or have had a, had a fire or any kind of loss that they've had or has their equipment? Um, you know, here's another thing with inspections. So you can do an inspection now, but if you don't close for three months, four months, wouldn't you want an inspection closer to the actual closing day? Well, you would have to pay a whole nother inspection fee. And that's not cheap. So, I mean, you can do that. You can absolutely set up two. I mean, I think that would probably be the smartest thing to do, but you're going to come out of pocket more. I would do a home inspection quickly to see that uh, indeed, you know, it is what you want. There's not a lot of stuff that needs to be done and you can afford any changes, you know, that need to be done to the home. As long as it doesn't have like a lengthy, lengthy list of items that, you know, is outrageous, it's good. So, okay. But again, the sellers are maybe living there for three months or two months or the house is sitting vacant, you know, for multiple months. And let's say it gets broken into or something happens and you don't know because you haven't been able to be there. You haven't been able to get in that home. So you don't know what's happened to this home. And without another inspection, and it would have to be a contingency that you put into your initial offer. You can't come later with this contingency. You have to spell it out in the beginning. I'm going to inspect the house within 15 days of you accepting my offer. And then we're going to do another inspection, you know, three to four weeks from the actual closing date or, you know, six weeks from the closing date again to make sure, because six weeks is fair. That's usually about, well, five weeks is about what happens now. Um, so it's not too long. With six weeks, you could do six weeks, but any longer than that, I, I think it's too long. Um, and if there is no executive order, again, or if the executive order is still in a, intact, you can't get in that house. So we could not put it in the contingency if you wanted to close quickly. Um, or you could add it, you know, and if by chance the, the executive order was over, we want to see the house. There's ways you can write this into the contract, but if you want to close before the executive order is over, you cannot ever walk in that house until you have the key in your hand. And it's just, it's a risk. I will be honest with you, it is a risk. Um, so it's up to you what you want to do with that and how you want to do it. Uh, as a seller, here is your risk. So. You put your house on the market. Let's say you have another house that you uh, already have an offer in on, but it's contingent on you selling this house. That means contingent means you, you have to sell your house first in order for your loan process to go through. So if you do not sell your house, you cannot get your loan. All right, so here we go. You put in your offer. Excuse me, an offer is coming to you. You have another offer out there. Uh, it's an acceptable offer. You like it might not be what you're asking for, it might be, it might be over, who knows, you might get two offers even. Um, but you take this offer, but it says that they need to get in there after the executive order is over um, to view the home before they will close on it. Well, we don't know when the executive order is going to happen, so how long do you have that you can keep paying your mortgage and how long is the other home going to wait for you to sell your home? And you can't sell your home until the executive order is over and they have to come do an inspection or you know, even an inspector or they're doing their own inspection. 
they could walk away at this point. So you may have your house off the market for three months, four months, five months, and then boom, your deal's over. It's gone. It's shredded. Or the person has lost their job. Again, you have no deal. If they lose their job, that's it. They're done. Um, there are multiple, you know, or, or even, God forbid, the person who passed away from COVID-19. And then again, you've had your house off the market and you, you have nobody to sell it to. You can't sell it to a dead person. Um, so there are complications. Now, there are some possible advantages to selling the house. You don't have people traipsing through your house which a lot of people don't like, but you know, in order to sell a home, people need to come see your house. You, you know, as long as you're okay with the camera, your video should be all right. But, um, you know, if you have to, well, for the virtual with no inspection, this is what I'm trying to spit out. Um, that would be a benefit to the seller because they're not coming, the owner isn't coming to the house or the person is going to buy it. They're not coming to it. They're just buying it from a picture and they think it's great. And there's no contingency for them to see it and approve it. And therefore it's a done deal pretty much, um, whether there's an inspection or not. Now, if there's no home inspection, every seller loves that because then there's nothing to squabble about. And um, you know, the deal is just closed. It's a quicker process. Um, and that, really is about the best thing that could happen for you at this time as a seller. To be able to get an offer on your home or multiple offers and they're not going to come see it because of the executive order. It's not in the contract as a contingency for them to come see it. And if they say no inspection, the bank just has to do the closing and the appraiser has to come in and it has to work there but that's it. You're done. You're closing. If there's no contingency there except for the mortgage, or even if it's cash, you're done. You sold your home. And it was easy. It was easy. Um, the, only, the only thing that can cause a real problem that I see is if they do put in there a clause that they want to see the home after the executive order. That, I think, draws in more potential for you to lose this deal due to something happening because of time. You know, we don't know where the world's gonna be in a few months or where we're going to be uh, here in New York. You know, things may be back together and normal and that would be great and I would love that, but it might not. There still may be a lot of people out of work. And who knows, maybe more people will lose their jobs. So unless if they're a doctor or a nurse, uh, those are pretty much the people. And maybe a food restaurant employee, uh, I don't know. Those people probably are guaranteed work. But, you know, the rest of us are kind of dispensable, unfortunately, when things are shut down. So it depends on what happens. It depends on what our country does. It depends on what our state does. But there are advantages and disadvantages to selling your house at this time. Uh, you know, if you didn't represent something that was wrong with your home, you could be sued. That's another thing. And, um, you know, I as a realtor am liable too for whatever you say. And I can't go and verify it. So it kind of puts me on the line too, where I could be penalized because of something that a seller does uh, that maybe they weren't aware they were doing, but it was something that causes an issue. That is something to think about as well. I hope this has been informative for you. I hope it helps you. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I, I would be more than happy to answer them for you. Uh, this is Karen Lambert with Howard Hanna in Rochester, New York. I hope you're having an amazing day, the best day you can have. And I look forward to seeing you again when I provide more information on real estate and you. Thanks. Have a great day.